Hi, welcome to Robot Culture. Today we're going to talk about the life of Paul Sherwin. John William Paul Sherwin was born June 7, 1956 in Widnes, Lancaster, England. Paul's father was a chemical engineer and when Paul was six he took a job in Kenya. So Paul moved there and he grew up in Africa. Paul did not start his career in sports as a cyclist. He started as a competitive swimmer. Paul finished second in the under 14 category in the Kenyan Swimming Championship. When Paul was 14 he moved back to England and he won the under 18 category in the British Swimming Championships. At the age of 16, Paul gave up swimming to become a road cyclist. He rode for the Weaver Valley Cycling Club, which was coached by the famous Harold Nelson. In 1976, at the age of 19, Paul won the year-long Star Trophy Award. This set Paul on a course for professional racing. In 1976, Paul rode in the World Championship race in Venezuela and he won the year-long Palme d'Or competition. That same year, he graduated from the Manchester Institute of Science with a degree in paper technology. He then moved to a suburb of Paris and joined the amateur team, the Athletic Club de Boulogne Billancourt, which was a juniors racing team for Team Peugeot, and he was crowned the best racer in France. That year, the team had so many English-speaking riders, the first ever, that they became known as the Foreign Legion. In 1978, he turned professional for Team Fiat, and he placed 70th in that year's Tour de France. After that, he joined Team Les Rideaux, and he was signed as a domestique. In 1979, he came in 19th in Milan San Remo, and in 1980, he came in 11th of that same race. In the 1980 Tour de France, in stage three, Paul had a big crash and he couldn't catch back up to the peloton, but he still raced, he persevered, and he missed the time cut. But the UCI saw so much courage in his effort, they reinstated him the next day. In the 1982 Tour de France, Paul placed 111th. In the 1984 Tour de France, on the final mountain stage, Australian racer Alan Piper was knocked off his bike by a fan. This was at a crucial moment in the race, and Alan had no chance of making the elimination. Paul said, come on, let's ride together, let's do this, let's beat the elimination. And they did, they beat the cutoff, and they went across the final stage holding hands, and this showed the absolute sportsmanship of Paul Sherwin. That same year, he finished 15th in Paris-Roubaix. In the 1985 Tour de France, on the first mountain stage, Paul had a huge crash in the first kilometer. And that race was led by Bernard Hinault, and he set such an amazing pace that Paul had no way of ever catching up. But he didn't care. He persevered and he kept racing, a solo effort. He was only accompanied by a motorcycle over six mountain passes. He finished the stage one hour behind the leader and 23 minutes behind the cutoff. But yet again, Paul's perseverance impressed the UCI so much that again, they reinstated him the next day. In 1987, Paul won the British Road Championship and two seasons later, he retired. In 1989, Paul Sherwin was a manager of Team Banana Raleigh. And that same year, Phil Liggett was tapped by Channel 4 to host the Tour de France in England. Phil knew he couldn't do this alone because he was just a sports rider and he needed a professional cyclist. So he tapped Paul Sherwin to be a co-commentator. And this was the moment that Paul Sherwin would become known to England as an amazing sports commentator. But that was only a part-time gig. So in 1992, Paul became the public relations manager for Team Motorola, where he met Lance Armstrong, and they would continue a lifelong friendship. In 1996, American broadcasters ABC, CBS, and NBC decided to pick up the duo of Phil and Paul to broadcast the Tour de France in America. This meant the duo was now the speaking voices of the Tour de France in all of the English-speaking world. In 1999, Paul returned to Africa, where he bought a home with his family in Uganda. Paul has always loved Africa. It has been a part of his heart and soul since he lived there as a child. He bought a stake in a gold mine that was owned by a friend of his father's, and he became an advocate for cycling in Africa and conservation of Africa and the people of Africa. He became the spokesman for a bicycle relief organization that brought bicycles to Africa and trained Ugandans how to be bicycle mechanics. In the duo of Phil and Paul, Phil was definitely the lead broadcaster. He was the lead commentator. He was a professional sports journalist, but he did get a lot of things wrong, namely the names of riders. And that's where Paul came in. 
Paul was there to gently correct all the mistakes of Phil. And over the years, that correcting of mistakes built a unique friendship and bond that just became a banter of cycling. It became the tempo of cycling. After racing in seven Tour de France's and commentating on 33, 2018 marked the 40th edition of a Tour de France that Paul Sherwin was a part of. And on December 2nd, 2018, Paul went to bed, fell asleep, and had a heart attack in his sleep in Uganda. He is survived by his wife, Catherine, and two children. As a lot of you know from previous videos, I grew up with bicycles, from BMX racing, getting into road cycling. I grew up in the same town as Greg LeMond, and I followed him immensely. But back then, we didn't have a lot of coverage of the Tour de France. So I'd read about it here and there, and mostly just talk about it with people. But in 2001, when I got back into road cycling, I got deep into the Tour de France, and so I cannot imagine a Tour de France without the duo of Phil and Paul. The sport, in my opinion, is the most beautiful sport in the world. It is the best sport in the world. It is a sport that can help change the lives of so many in the world. I will always feel this way, but the next Tour de France will definitely have a missing piece of it, a missing voice that has helped guide me through road cycling in my adult life. I will surely miss Paul Sherwin. It is a loss that came too soon to the great sport of cycling. Well, I think that just about covers it. The life and legacy of Paul Sherwin. If you like this episode, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'm on Instagram, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook, I'm everywhere, people. And until the next time, I hope to see you out there on the road.